I am so excited to share this video with you. Notion Calendar is finally here. Oh my god! In today's video, we're going to dive into what it is, what it's not, how to get set up, and some really helpful use cases. So let's start with what Notion Calendar is, because if you've been a Notion user for a while, you'll be familiar with the calendar view layout option in databases. Now this is not that. Instead, Notion Calendar is a standalone application. So not a feature, standalone application that has a direct integration with Notion. You can pull in various Notion databases into Notion Calendar and what that creates is a unified calendar where you can manage all of your databases and all of your different tasks in one space. So imagine your tasks, your content, your subscriptions. You can also pull in your Google Calendar tasks. So while there's not a two-way integration, meaning that you can import your Google tasks into Notion, you can manage them all within that single calendar view. So not only is that super helpful if you are a solo Notion user, if you're working with a team, this just changed the game because you can also pull in the calendars of teammates. Think about managing scheduling, availability, all that good stuff. There are so many exciting features with this Notion release. Before we dive into those, let's talk about how you can get set up. Right now, you can use Notion Calendar on desktop browsers, desktop application, or on your iOS device. I'm so sorry, Android users. I do hear an option is coming soon for you too. The easiest way to access your Notion Calendar is by clicking into your Notion account, scrolling down to your bottom section, and you'll see there's a new calendar option here. If you click on this, it's going to open up into Notion Calendar. Now, if you don't already have an account set up with Notion Calendar, is going to prompt you to do so and you will need to sign in through your Google account. Now when you do this it's automatically going to pull in the Google Calendar and any events associated with that account. So you'll see here I've got mine, I don't really have anything going on in this account but what I can do is I can pull in multiple Google Calendars if I wanted. So if I click on here I can add a new Google Calendar and I'm going to connect my personal one and you'll see here it automatically populates with all of my tasks and events that are on my personal Google account. So I'm going to collapse that for now so it's not too confusing and I've got my Google calendars added. Now I'm going to scroll down and here is my Notion workspace. Now if I hover over I can click the three dots and I can either add a Notion database or manage workspace. If you click on manage workspace it's going to bring up your settings for Notion calendar. And you could just go through these and adjust them to your liking. So if we click on general, you can choose which day you like to start your week on. You can also choose your time format. Sometimes I like 24 hours, so you can change that to your preference. It's also where you can set dark mode. You can also add your integrations to Google Calendar. You can set up conferences. So if you are using Zoom, you can connect that or an alternative. Notion, if you want to add other workspaces, you can do that and you can also adjust your profile. Probably want to change that username at some point. <laughs> Once that's configured, you can begin adding your Notion databases. Now, an important thing to keep in mind here is you need to have a calendar or timeline view on the original version of a database. So a lot of times we're used to creating linked views of databases and maybe we have a calendar view and a linked view. That won't cut it. It needs to be the original. So I'll show you how that works. If I click to add a new Notion database, you'll see here my tasks are on top. I didn't even have to search for it. So if I click on that, it's going to automatically populate with my tasks. I can right click this, change the color if I want, and I can go ahead and add a new Notion database. This time I'm going to do email marketing. I'm going to change the color of that so it's not confusing. So I'll change that to purple. You'll see that down here from my weekly email. But if I go to add in my YouTube videos, if I go to do this and I search YouTube, nothing's going to appear. And that's because on the original version of this database, I've got a table view and I've got a gallery view, but I don't have a calendar view. So I'm going to click on the plus icon here. We'll just call this calendar. Click here, done. And now if I go back to my Notion calendar, click off and I follow the same step through. Now if I search for YouTube, 
I can now pull in that view. So if you're not seeing a database you want to pull in, it's usually because you haven't set up a calendar or timeline view on the original database. So we'll do that. We'll change this to red. Now that's not showing anything because I haven't been very active on YouTube. But one of the great things about pulling in all of these databases is now I have one unified view of everything going on in my business. And from here, I can add, edit, or change different events on different calendars from one space. So if I click on say today, if I click here, double click, I'm gonna add record to video and we'll check the time, it's 7.30. So I'm gonna scroll down to, I think I started this at seven. So let's do seven till say nine. The day is correct. There's only me. I don't need to add me as a participant. There's no conference in location, but we can add these things if we needed. Documents, I do have some notes. So I'm going to click in here and I'm going to search for them. Search Notion calendar release. And now I can tag relevant notes or in my case, uh, YouTube script bullet points in here if I wanted to. And I can mark that as busy and I could choose what calendar I want to mark that on. So I'd probably mark that on my tasks. And from here, I can click on this and I can open it up in Notion. As you can see, it's in my task database and it's added this new task in here with the due date and any relevant information. So if I click on this, I can change it from here so let's do 8 p.m. till 9 p.m. and we'll call this record calendar video just to show you how that updates. So if we click back on over to Notion Calendar, you'll see here it's now adjusted the time and the name here as well. What's cool about this is I can change it. So if I wanted to make this an email, if I could, I could change it to a YouTube video. This is just the recording, so I won't do that. But I can also drag this around. I can dra drag it across weeks if I wanted to. I can make this smaller, bigger. I could delete it as well by clicking here delete, I could duplicate it or copy it as well. Now let's take another example. So here I've got Cairo. Now this is a health appointment that is on my Google Calendar. If I right click on this, I can block this on my main calendar. So I could say block this event and show me as busy. So anything that is a health event, just show me as busy. And what's great about this is if I was sharing my calendar, especially with team members, I could, they could see that I'm not available, but I can keep the personal stuff personal if I wanted to. Now, the other cool thing that we can do here is we can share our availability. So let's say we wanted to make ourselves available for discovery calls with clients. If I come over to the right here, I can click on share availability. It's going to open this up for me and I can adjust sometimes I'm available to meet. So let's say tomorrow I am available from two till four. And then let's say on Friday, we'll do two till four. Yeah, let's do two to four again. And then if you look on the right here, it says would 30 minutes. And here you can adjust that. So I could change that to 45 minutes if I wanted to, during any of these times, and it's showing the time zone, work for you. And it gives me a little calendar link here because I could turn the schedule and link on or off. I could scroll down. I can also adjust the time zone. So say this was a meeting with someone in New York. I could click New York and it will adjust the times to match their time zone, which is helpful. We'll have it on Google Meet, or I could adjust this here. The account is relevant for, so that's correct. Hold time. I can add here and I can hit create. Now what I can do is copy the scheduling link. This allows people to book times to meet with me. That allows you to consolidate tools, keep everything within your Notion account and everything integrated. Very helpful. Now with this, I touched on time zones. The other thing you could do is you can come over on your calendar and you can add a time zone here. So I can click on this plus icon here and I can add different time zones. Let's move me a little bit out of the way here. So we'll add New York and we'll add LA. Here we go. And I have a friend in Vietnam. Let's do that one just so you can see. And you'll see here now we've got different time zones. Again, a really great feature if you're working with team members or if you're a remote team that is global or if you tend to have a lot of meetings with people in different time zones. A lot of my clients, like 95% are in the States. So these two in particular are very helpful for me. 
But again, if you are working with team, also very helpful. Speaking of team, is you can pull in their calendars as well. And what's great about that is being able to overlap different calendars and be able to see when you are available to have maybe an internal team meeting. Now, the other thing that is great is you have this little quick meeting at the side here. I can click on this and I can set up a quick meeting with someone. So I have an alias I have set up for this. His name is just in case at chloefarmsk.com. So we're going to have a quick meeting with just in case. I can click on this. You'll see here I can give it a name. So meeting with Justin. I can choose the start time. So we'll do, let's move me out of the way here. We'll do M to 10.30 on Wednesday. There we go. You'll see here it automatically has set up a Google Meet link and code for me. If I had an agenda, I could click in here and I could link that. I can set reminders if I wanted to, adjust my calendar here. And once I'm done, I can send the invite. Oh, I, this isn't cool. I spelled Justin's name wrong. <laughs> Good job, he's not a real person. Now you'll see here, if I right click, I can email the participant or if it was a team member, I could show their overlay to see if they were available to me. Now, let's say that you set up that meeting with a team member and something's come up and you just have to postpone it. One of my favorite features here is I can drag this to a different time and you'll see here it says do you want to send an update and I can click and I can send Justin that update and everything is populated it appears on my calendar it's all good. Now let's try adding an event that we want to appear on Google Calendar so we'll click in here again I'm going to just put example event and this time I'm going to say show it on my calendar show it on my personal calendar and we're going to put it under these are my time blocking colors here so let's make it admin and finance here and mark me as busy so from busy from 2 to 30 and that was today you'll see example event if I now go into my google calendar you'll see here my example event is showing up on google calendar and again if I was to add another one here second example this time we'll block this off as not finances we'll do client work save it I can come into my Notion calendar and you're seeing that appear in here as well. So what's really great is that instead of having all these different calendars or different tasks, events, trying to manage everything all over the place, it's all in one unified place. Now, another couple of helpful features you might want to know, if you click on this drop down next to week, you can change it to day, you can change it to month, or you can change it to number of days. So you can really customize this here. If you have the desktop application that you get this Mac toolbar and it just gives you an overview of your upcoming tasks. And if you hit command and K on your keyboard, you can go through all of the different options. So you can show your teammates calendar, meet with people, share availabilities. It just gives you all these kind of shortcuts and it's a quick way to find different tasks that you might want to carry out. So that's all the cool features that Notion Calendar brought us, but there are a couple of limitations. So I want to go over some of those with you as well. The obvious one is at the top here, you're seeing all of these different tasks. These are tasks that are for each day in my Notion task calendar, but I haven't assigned a time. I prefer not to assign very strict times. I just sort of have calendar blocks. Unless you have a time attached, they're just kind of going to hang out here at the top. That could be a good thing or it can be a little frustrating when you're looking at your day. You can always click on them and assign a different time. So just click it from all day being off to set the time there. You can do that. The other thing that isn't great is if a task is complete. So for example, this task is complete. If I open it up in Notion, you'll see here the task is complete, but it's still showing on my calendar, which can be a little bit confusing. I don't love that. I wish I could see that it was complete. The other thing I'm not a fan of is you can't see properties. So I can see the task name, but I can't see any of the important information. And if we look at Notion calendar views within Notion on databases, you can add properties. So it would be great to be able to see those, to be able to see priorities, status, who it's assigned to, that kind of thing. I'm hoping they bring that out in the future. And then another thing that is 
a little frustrating is you have the option to pull in filtered views. So for example, on my task database, I have a view that's filtered to show anything tagged as a meeting. So I essentially have a task calendar, but then I can also create a meeting calendar. Now I can pull that in and color code it by clicking on the three dots, adding a Notion database, clicking on tasks, and you'll see here, I can pull in different views from that task database, as long as it's set up with a calendar view. So I have my meetings calendar view here, and I can pull this in as a separate database. So if I click on this, you'll see here, it does show. And if I click on this and I come over to the right, you see in really small writing, this is my meetings calendar. I can change out the color so I can make it color coded on the calendar itself but it's still going to retain the original database name, which to me creates a lot of confusion. I would like them to change that so we can rename these different options, different databases in Notion Calendar. And of course, it would be amazing to have true recurring tasks, but we can sort of emulate that between Google Calendar and just coming into our task databases and using this sort of recurring feature that we can create where it repeats. So there is a sort of workaround. So a few tweaks I'd like to see in the near future, but of course, it's always a work in progress. That aside, this is a great addition to Notion with some really useful features. I'd love to hear your thoughts, share your favorite feature and any questions you have in the comments below.